Hey everyone, checking in on a couple names here, a couple sectors, and I did a video for members, a long video over the weekend looking at a bunch of our laggard sectors, all the weak names, the hotels, the casino and gaming, the airliners, the cruise lines, the marijuana sector, they all look very similar on the daily charts and they are all weaker than the bounce we've seen in the S&P 500 and the vast majority of the major sectors in this market. So we were looking at it for a number of reasons. Number one, if this bounce keeps going for the S&P 500, we're watching some of these names to be laggards and watching for bull breaks. If the S&P 500 shows weakness and say gives us a daily downtrend and clearly gives us a weekly top of this bounce, we're gonna be looking at these sectors to drop to their lows before everybody else does. So the weakest is the airliners. And this is the Jets ETF. And every time I put this ticker in, a song pops into my head. I won't make it pop into your head, but we've got a pattern right now where 28 of the last 30 days have closed lower than we have opened. I have never seen a streak like that in my life. It shows a bunch of weakness, low, high, higher, low, lower, high. Anything above 1195 is a higher low and we are still 10% plus above that level. Let's see if we can stay in this tightening range. We have earnings coming up in a lot of these sectors. We just had, oh, who was it? Someone in the gaming sector had earnings. I think LVS just had earnings. So that's going to affect names in the casino and gaming sector. Airliners are gonna affect the airline sector. So be aware if you're playing any of these names, it doesn't matter if your name doesn't have earnings in a day or two, but if a sector name does, it could still be impacted. So just be aware of earnings across the board if you're going to be swinging any of these names. So Jets we know is a lead bear and it is going to, on any market weakness, it is not positioned well to absorb any of that weakness. And this chart shows you why, extremely weak. So we'll keep an eye on 1195, but the only kind of bull play I would be looking for was pretty much, it'd be a bottom fishing play with very little risk if we were to just dump straight to 1210 or something along those lines. Otherwise, I'm not interested in anything bullish with the airliners because they are the weakest of the weaker sectors. BA, not necessarily an airliner, but it's also very tight and it's close to a bear break. 134 is the level. If 134 breaks, I am viewing it as our low, high, higher low, lower high, higher low, lower high, and a break of 134 will affirm that the bears still have complete control. After 134, 120 is the next most important support level and anything under 154 is just a daily lower high. And we have not changed the daily trend at any point on this dump. Every single bounce is just a daily lower high. Burden of proof is absolutely on the bulls and they are not proving anything to us right now. So all about 134 tomorrow on BA. H hotels, gap up and a pullback. Got news that they are cutting their dividend and we're gonna see potentially a lot of names cutting their dividend if they're unable to continue paying it as they have been, but it's a very tight range. We had resistance of 57.40, the top of the bounce. The top over here is 57.31 and the high of today, 56.70. A very clear line in the sand resistance level that the bears are defending. When that level breaks, if it breaks to the upside, shorts are gonna cover and bulls are gonna use it as an entry signal. So that is the most important level, 5740. I will be interested in H as long as the little daily higher lows hold. We had a higher low at 5002, another one at 5166, and another one at 5255. So if we drop down and break 5255, I'm instantly no longer interested in H as a bull. We have to keep those higher lows up and then break resistance. CGC from the marijuana sector is doing the same thing. Very tight range sideways. Little higher lows though are still intact. Support of 1404, 1421, and 1455. We tried to break resistance on Monday. I actually entered a bullish position, was able to get out with small profit, but we broke a bunch of resistance. We failed to break 1634. So if we break 1455 from here, no longer interested in CGC bullish. If we hold 1455 and head back up towards resistance, I'll still be interested. RCL and cruise lines, very tight daily range. High of the bounce, low, lower high, pretty much a double bottom, lower high, and we're heading down to support. If we see a bear break of 33, 
No interest as a bull. Earnings are approaching. We would need to see the bulls break 37.61. And looks like earnings are going to come before any of that happens. So not interested in RCL, but there's a bunch of cruise liners doing the same thing. CL, very tight, heading down to support. What's the other one we got here? N H can never remember it off the top of my head. N L C H N C L H Norwegian. There we go. N C L H on the verge of a bear break, $11 and it broke bear break. So the weaker sectors are staying weak and not acting as laggards, but I am still watching the names that do still have those little higher lows. We'll throw Tesla in here in the end as well. It does not fit the theme of the video, but a lot of people watching it today, inside bar, close at the high of the day. We had a push after hours to try and squeeze some shorts, but that has come back down. This was a good trade and I just missed it. The 15 minute time frame was an equilibrium setting up. So as soon as we can identify the time frame to be watching, we know that that's the only time frame that matters to us today. So high of the day, this was a great top fish. I was live streaming and a bit too busy, but look at the high of yesterday's bounce. 7.12.77, 7.12.72. You cannot have a better top fish. And not only was that a top fish play, look at how many chances the bulls got first thing this morning. We rejected from the hourly resistance yesterday. Then we rejected by the high of the day by less than 65 cents. Then we rejected by that high by less than a dollar. And then we rejected again by less than $2. So tons of opportunity to top fish Tesla. And from that, we ended up pulling back a solid three and a half percent. So that was a great bear play first thing. After that, we had an equilibrium form where we had the high of the day, which was a rejection, the low of the day, which we were watching 684 support because we were looking for the hourly remain hourly time frame to remain tight. We formed an hourly higher low compared to 684. Let's look at the hourly. So this is just an example of how all the different time frames overlap. High of yesterday, low of yesterday, lower high is that 712's resistance, higher low at the end of the day, 684. So not only were we watching for the potential of a rejection from that 712 level first thing, as soon as we rejected and started pulling back hard, we were looking for a bounce to hold 684 support. My favorite trades are when we are playing off of nearby support or resistance, my risk is so very clearly defined and my reward can potentially be much higher. So we ended up with another chance to short where we formed a lower high compared to 709.68. I missed this one because I finished the live stream and I remember saying while live, I'm gonna be interested in top fishing Tesla if this move makes it up to 708, 709 and I have that less than a half percent risk. I had to go outside and water the plants in the greenhouse. I came back and saw that we had already rejected from that resistance. So at that point, what can I do? I can look for a higher low. So I tried to enter a 15 minute higher low here. I knew I was looking to play off of 688.71 support. What's the indication that a 15 minute higher low has formed? A two minute trend change. So I came back, sat at my computer and said, well, that's a solid two minute bounce. I'm gonna be looking for a two minute higher low to be a result of this bounce because we just bounced over five and a half dollars. So we pulled back and I entered at 700 and I put my stop under 697. I'm risking $3 and my attempt is to set a higher low compared to that level, break 703.32 to confirm a two minute trend change and set our 15 minute higher low. From there, I would sell half of my position at 705, let's say, which is a $5 gain. I put my stop under 697 and I have zero risk. And no matter what, I will make money on that trade. That would have been the ideal world, but we failed the two minute trend change. We dropped down and I stopped out at the bottom. And that was our 15 minute higher low. I missed it by 75 cents. So my stop was a little bit too light or too tight, I should say. We held that level for the rest of the, of the afternoon. And then there's our bull break and significant bull run. So I look at that and I said this in the live stream just now at the end of the day, I can look at that and get frustrated and get down on myself. Or I can look at that and say, damn, I just missed nailing that trade. And that was on point. 
I knew to be looking for a two minute trend change. We just didn't get it where I thought we would. I knew to be looking for a 15 minute higher low. My trade plan would have worked out perfectly if not for 75 cents of that drop. And next time that happens, I'm gonna make money. So that's the way that I view it and stay in a positive mindset because I was on point aside from a very slight adjustment in execution. From there, at that point, I have a small loss on the day, probably a little bit less than a half of a day loser. And I did not see much opportunity. And then as soon as the bull break happened, I said, all right, there's volatility. Great. I can now start scalp trading short-term ranges. So I was watching the one minute time frame on Tesla after this big bull move and saying, okay, 725, let's see if I can play off of that resistance. We hit the high of the bounce, we pulled back, and then right here I top fish 725 knowing the five minute time frame was extended. We had not consolidated on the five minute chart in multiple percent of a move. So I entered at 722s and put my stop over 725, again, risking $3. We rejected from resistance, we pulled back, I covered in the 719s, so I made back a bit more than I lost on the initial stop out. I then went to look bullish. Why would I look to go bullish at that point? Because I knew we were just going to be looking for a five minute higher low to form. I was looking bearish because of how extended we were from our last consolidation. And then I was looking bullish because we were just looking for a five minute higher low. So back to the one minute from there. So I covered in the 719s and I started to get ready for a bull entry. I entered bullish in the 718s and I saw this bounce. I said, that's not convincing. That looks like a bear flag. And I exited for a 20 cent gain, pretty much break even. Just nope, not liking that timing, not liking the bounce follow through. If I wanted to see convincing bounce follow through from this kind of pullback, I would have wanted to see the move from 717s up to 720 and beyond. Then I'd be comfortable. And because we didn't get that, I bailed very quickly. But just re-entered right again in the seven, at 716. So 718, bailed pretty much break even, back in 716. Why am I comfortable going back in? Still looking for that five minute higher low. Nothing has changed about that. It's just gonna pull back a bit further than initially anticipated. So entered at 716 at that point, and then sold on the bull, little bull move at 719s again. So half a percent trade. So I made half a percent on the way down, half a percent on the way up. And that gave me a green day overall. So that's Tesla. And that is it. Hope you have a good rest of your day. We'll see you tomorrow.